everyone, Darren here from the Seco Science Center. Today we are going to be talking all about food webs within an ecosystem. Let's focus in on our ocean biome. The ocean is vast and when we want to talk about an ecosystem, we want to talk about a particular area. So why not use the Rocky Shore ecosystem as a great example? Have you ever been to the Seco Science Center or Odeon Point State Park to go tide pooling at all? A rocky shore ecosystem and any ecosystem in the world are made up of biotic and abiotic components. Biotic components are living, whereas abiotic components are not living. When we talk about food webs, we want to be focusing on the living organisms that are found within an ecosystem. So for our tide pool rocky shore ecosystem example, all of the different living components, living animals and seaweed algae, they are connected by a food web depending on what they eat and what eats them. You can picture a food web just like a spider web, but instead of it being all made out of silk, it's made out of food chains. Let me provide you an example. In the low tide zone, you will probably find a few species of crabs like this one. Crabs love to eat green sea urchins. Let me grab you a green sea urchin so that you can see what that looks like. Awesome. Green sea urchins love to eat seaweed and seaweeds eat or make their food from the sun's energy. Seaweed can be any type. And this is an example of some seaweed. Crabs get their energy from the green sea urchin. The green sea urchin gets its energy from seaweed. And the seaweed gets its energy from the sun. So that is an example of one food chain. Crabs also will eat sea stars sometimes. So here is a sea star. Wow, look at that. Sea stars favorite foods are mollusks. An example is the dog one. Thin little snail in there. This is a dog whelk. Dog whelks are a sea snail and they are invertebrates that are carnivores. They will eat other sea snails called periwig. This is a little periwinkle. Periwinkles will eat algae such as seaweed, just like the green sea urchin. So there's our seaweed. And again, seaweed gets their energy from the sun. Crabs link the first food chain with the second example I just gave you. Crabs get their energy from sea stars get their energy from dog walks, get their energy from periwinkles, and our periwinkles get their food from seaweed. Within the Rocky Shore ecosystem, there are different tidal zones with different organisms in each and they sometimes overlap, but some really are only gonna be found in certain zones. So looking here at this poster, if we are looking at the deeper ocean, that is gonna be represented down here, not even on the poster. And as you get closer to the beach, we're gonna be moving up. So down here is the subtidal zone where deeper water critters are gonna be and they are always submerged underwater. You then are gonna go up further towards the beach to the low tide zone, which sometimes doesn't have water, but most of the time does. Our mid tide zone, and then our high tide zone, 
And last but not least, our splash zone, which is where the beach would be, where you would put down a blanket and maybe build some sand. Now that we know the different tidal zones, and I've given you a couple examples of two different food chains that could link together to form a food web, can you think of any similarities between food webs within different tidal zones or differences? For instance, is the high tide food web going to be different than the subtitle or similar? We are all interconnected somehow and food webs are a great way to represent the difference in organisms, what they may eat and what might eat them. I hope these examples were helpful throughout this video and I want you to have fun learning and exploring all about food webs.